So Coach Saban does not believe that Oklahoma is big enough for SEC play. As a matter of fact, he was talking about this in Ireland, and I thought it was interesting the way he framed this because he's been consistent with this message about how large you need to be on both sides of the ball on your lines. But the quote that he gave on the Pat McAfee show was, Oklahoma being described as, quote, one of the most athletic teams in the country, but says that Oklahoma isn't as big up front as some other SEC teams he like in Oklahoma to Oregon in that sense. Number one, Oregon's a good football team. Oregon's a damn good football team. Oregon is probably going to be in the Big Ten Championship if we're all right about our predictions, and how often is that true? That said, we think the world of Dan Lanning, we think the world of what he has built out there, we love Dylan Gabriel in that system and Will Steins. Frankly, you know, I'm saying this as the dude that you know. Dylan Gabriel is on the most talented football team he's ever been on. Full stop. That's just that's a fact. That's truth. I think that you look around at Oklahoma, there's a couple of things that I would like to point out here, which is, you know, Oklahoma quite literally just got a commitment from a six foot six, three hundred pound, five star offensive ty- tackle named Michael Fasusi. Come on, coach, get, give us a little bit of credit here. But if you're looking at the depth chart right now, I'm still going to pick a fight with you because while Oklahoma can't rotate through like Georgia and like Texas, Oklahoma is really talented up front. It's just you need David Stone to hurry up and be G.K. McCoy. But outside of that, we're going six foot four, 250, 260 on the edge there, and we'll see what happens in the rest of the middle. But one of the other things I think to take into account if you are an Oklahoma fan and you're worried about this because, yes, Coach Saban knows ball and certainly knows more ball than I do, I think I think you would look at this and say, okay, what is Coach Saban used to seeing? Three-man front, right? They, he plays an odd front. He loves an enormous nose tackle that can eat up the inside. It's the same front that Kirby Smart uses. What it allows for is when you can – demand double teams from guys like Jordan Davis, Jalen Carter, to use Georgia Georgia as an example, you can do almost anything you want in coverage, which means you can run cover seven match all day because you got guys that can close like a fury, and you've got defensive linemen that can win one-on-ones against offensive tackles and really split guards if you want to with those inside linebackers because one of the things that I thought was always fascinating and interesting about his team, especially in the 2010s, is that they were so large up front. I mean, not just on the defensive line, but an inside linebacker, outside linebacker. They could more or less do what they wanted to do because they could guarantee that their guys were going to be bigger and faster than your guys. When you got a Quentin Williams, yeah, you're going to be able to get after Oklahoma, right? That's the thing. Oklahoma is still waiting to get back to having that sort of a player in the defensive interior, which is why I'm saying David Stone needs to hurry up. But I really do like the dudes that we got there. Like, I, I think Ethan Downs is really going to break out this year for the rest of the nation. We already know what kind of player he is. I'm also looking at this going, Brent Venables knows what he needs. Zach Alley, who grew up underneath Brent Venables, knows what he needs. And I think you're going to simulate those pressures with four-man, five-man looks where you're not going to send more than three. You're not going to send more than four. You're going to drop back, and you're going to say, okay, dink and dump us down the field. Because that's, that's the game in the SEC. Do not get beat with an explosive play. The more explosive plays that you limit, the better the defense is going to be because you have to basically make that offense play more plays, right? Make them earn every single yard, every blade of grass, right to left, north to south. Spill it. If you can be quick at the point of attack, it doesn't matter that you are not that big, right? It, but if dudes are bigger than you and they can get leverage on you, that's all she wrote. I mean, it's just football. It's, it's basic football. And that's why I think some folks have already looked at this and come to me and been like, yo, Coach Saban doesn't think that you're big enough. And I'm going, not compared to what he's had in the past? No, 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 nobody's big enough. As a matter of fact, since July, Coach Saban has really beat the hell out of Everybody but Georgia and Texas for not being big enough on both sides of the ball. Even if you got the offensive line to go, he's going to look at your defensive line going, you're too light. And I'm going, I understand what you mean, right? But I have seen teams that are light, that run four-man fronts with outstanding star defensive tackles, go win national championship. Matter of fact, LSU didn't have a great defense, but they ran this three-man front, right? And they were able to get a lot done because – they're three men up there playing 
in those important defensive end and that one tackle position allowed for Patrick Queen and them to go do what they got to do, right? It, it allowed for your, D, your, your secondary to really take a look at the read and find out if they got a fit or if they got to go. I think one of the best ways to test this is one of my favorite plays to run against a really aggressive defense and a defense that I think is faster than what I got. You run a fake power, right? So you had that uh, inside linebacker bite, and you've got your Y or your tight end, your slot, whatever. You come in, you replace, right? If that inside linebacker can be wrong-footed and get back, you're just cooked because that's just a more athletic player than, than anybody else has. That is the kind of guy that changes the game for to his team. If you can take away both the run and the pass as an inside linebacker, good luck. But the other thing is, if you can't, if you got a defensive line that can just dent the pocket, make that quarterback feel pressure so you don't get this cone shape, you get a you get a, a, a triangle, right? He's going to feel that triangle coming in and he's going to make a move. And then you got outside linebackers that got contained. I, I wanted to talk about this because I wanted to say that Coach Saban is both right and that there's a fix, right? That's the other thing about football that I think many people forget. You got a fix for everything. There's a solution for everything. Whether or not you have the Jimmy for that Joe solution is something else entirely, right? Coaches say go execute is because they know they have something that will work if you follow the plan. I'm also looking at that and I'm saying, okay, who has guys that it doesn't matter what the plan is? And that's why you see folks that wanted to have a running, scrambling, mobile quarterback in the mid-2010s if they didn't have it already because that guy's going to make you right. You know, uh, the reason we love Patrick Mahomes is you can call a play. That play can be absolutely solved. Uh, that problem can be solved by the defense, and Pat Mahomes just finds a way to make you right. I think that that stuff is really important. So I just wanted to talk about that real quick, say, find the solution. Find the solution, find the solution, and then execute Jimmy and Joe.